Hey, I'm back here real quick with the Battle for Stalingrad. I wanted to just clarify and recap on a couple of things because uh, I did skip through a few little bits and pieces here. Once you're done with a combat, in this particular instance here, we had... Where's my tweezers? Big shadows from the lights. Uh, this attack that we conducted here, there was only a requirement, uh, there was a requirement to lose two units by the enemy, and there was only one there, so that left us with one breakthrough point, point or gave us one breakthrough point. So I could move one hex and attack, and conduct one attack if I wanted to. So we just advanced into the buildings there for what it's worth. <clears throat> the second uh, attack we conducted was over here, and then once you're done with the attack, you uh, you pull a reaction chip, and we received a no reaction chip. Then we pulled uh, did this combat here. We were successful. There were there was one extra unit that had to be lost here as well. Just trying to zoom in here a little bit, and we advanced. Or I guess we were here somewhere. We were here, advanced into here. We we're adjacent to a unit here. We had one breakthrough point, so we got to attack. And we attacked, but we only killed one unit, so we didn't progress any further. And we also pulled a reaction chip at the end of each one of those uh, combats and received no reaction. There were six reaction chits in the bucket and uh, 24 chits that say this, that say no reaction. When you receive a chit that says reaction, let's see if we can find one here, like this, <clears throat> place stops at that point and reverts to the Soviets and the Soviets then get to have their, what's I think it's basically it's called a reaction impulse and then that continues until they're done and then play then reverts back to the German player. So it's a pretty interesting little exercise. Now you might say, hey Kevin, I noticed you had an adjacent unit over here, what's up? Well, indeed, we do need to fix that clipping right there, but we also need to conduct our attack. And I'm going to stop the video here because, first of all, I really don't have any of these units set up where they need to be or should be. Not that that will, I think, make a material difference, although it could be a supporting attack. So I could actually move some of these forces here into a supporting position to assist an attack here. So I'm going to stop the video, check those rules out, and I'm also going to check the rules for whether I have to attack all the adjacent units or just, uh, just choose my attack. I believe it's just choosing my attack. But very first time playing, read the rules once, we're diving in. So we'll double check that, make sure we're doing it right. All right, catch you guys later. We'll, we'll talk on the flip side and see what happens with this little attack. Probably finish up the turn before I do too much more video or anything like that so we get a better sense for the actual system and how it works. Right now, all I can say is it's freaking deadly. Later.